Hello, hello. I see someone joined. Say hi when you join so I can make sure I can see the comments. Let's see who's here. Oh, there's two of you. Somebody say hello, hello. Hello, Cheryl. Yay. I think I actually have my um, my camera down a little lower than I normally do tonight. Um, I decided, I had to decide really fast what we were going to do tonight. Can you hear me? Thumbs up if you can hear me. Um, because my daughter came over needing a box car for my grandson for tomorrow. So we just finished. <laughs> okay, so tonight we're going to do Bird Joy. And I chose this one. And we're going to play with the hive stencil, the hive flower stencil, because I think it's super fun. But in addition to that, I think I'm going to use the Happy Birthday to You sentiment from, from the My Weakness stamp set because I, I really like that sentiment. So I think we're going to try that. Hey, Mama. So tonight it's going to be this little guy. We're going to color this little guy like kind of similar to, to how he is on the package. I really want to do him red tonight because I chose yellow and blue for the background. Hello, hello. So I wanted to tell you guys I have a work in progress in case you guys want to see it. So I went out to the ranger site and I found this sheet of paper that lists all of the oxide inks. And so I went through and stamped all mine and cut them all out. I haven't decided how I'm gonna store them yet, but I wanted to be able to see what color they were before I stamped with them. So I have them ready, I just haven't done anything with them yet. But I did them on sweet sentiment paper. I thought they were pretty cool that way. So I wanna color this little guy. I wanted to show you guys what we were working on tonight, though. A little bit of personal right up here up front while we're waiting for a few more people to join. So my um, my grandson needed a box car. So this is a box car that we threw together tonight at the last minute. Um, this is the back side of it. So it has his Spider-Man license plate, steering wheel. All this all this stuff so that's what we were doing until about two or three minutes before the live and then I had to jump on real quick and decide what I was gonna do tonight so I am a little ill prepared today but I think it's okay we'll just we'll roll with it so I think we're gonna color this little guy up first and then um, I'm gonna play around with the background because I haven't decided if I wanna do the hive or the flowers or both. So I got several pieces of paper so we could play with them all and decide what we, um, what we think. There we go. So I'm gonna set that aside. We'll come back to that afterwards, but let's go ahead and start with coloring this little guy. But the reason I didn't, I don't have him cut out already or anything like that is because we were in a rush tonight. So I kind of want to do him in a red color. So I think I was gonna use R89, but I think I'm gonna use R59. Hi, Karen. And then I'm going to use 46 because it's my favorite. And then I'm going to use 24, I think. Um, maybe I want to go... Maybe I want to add in here 37 with 46. And then I can finish up with maybe 43. 
Let me swatch that color real quick and make sure that looks good. Hey, Michelle, how are you? I'm sorry I was running a little, little late tonight, but um, just a couple minutes. So this is my R59. This is my R37. I like the way those blend well together. This is my R46. Yep, yep, I'm liking it. This is my R24, so it's gonna start bringing out a little bit lighter red. And then this one is my 43, which is significantly lighter, but still okay. So up close, this is what we have. I think it's great. It works really well for me, I think. So this is gonna be my red combination. So let me put this away. I'm gonna go ahead and pick all my colors now. I don't usually do that, but I want to for this bird because I wanna make him red, yellow, and blue. So I actually need, so I'll just put my other colors in this one. Um, Yep, blue, I think for blue, I'm gonna use B37. What, no sound again? And I turned up my sound all the way to make sure it was loud enough tonight. 3726, maybe 26, maybe 24 with this one. I'm just gonna use three blues so 37, 26, we oh, like that, and then 24, I'm going to move these to this one, so I like these three blue colors, I only need blue colors because these are just, I mean three because these are just going to be an accent color, so I don't need a whole lot on there, but I do need a yellow, um, so I think I'm going to go with, let's try 18, 13, and 11 and see how that goes, 18, Y, 13, what kind of like that? I don't even know if we'll need 11, but let's try it anyway. How long have I had the 10 marker holders? Oh, you mean this? Oh, we don't have those. Um, but because I kept using two of these over and over and over again, Dale just stuck them together for me. Because I, I have separate ones. Like this. I designed it for you. And I, huh? I designed it. Yeah, so I kept using these in the video and putting them like back to back and stuff. And so he just attached them for me so it would be easier for me. Um, I have Y18, Y13, and Y11. So now I have those colors. Oh, we have to do his beak and his feet. So I didn't go for the traditional beak color. I went I went for a more She said sorry, Sandy. Sandy can't even cut out. Oh, okay. Um so I was using these two back to back because I was needing them a lot on the video too rows and so um so Dale just stuck them together for me we don't actually have those in the shop I just Dale just stuck them together for me to make it easier on my live so I think I'm gonna use that was e47 44 not really liking I think these are very low on juice and 43, nope, I don't like that. We're not gonna do that. No, you didn't miss it, you did not miss it. 
So let me see here. I think I would rather use maybe 42. Yeah, I want it to be really light. 42, 51, and then I think I'm going to mix in some C, four, and maybe six. So I'm gonna make the beak the this brownish color rather than this. So I'm gonna start with a deep gray. And then I'm gonna move it into a tan color like this. It's gonna be a little a little wonky, a little not what you're used to. I love my holder too. I love them too. Not traditionally what you're used to because it's two entirely separate colors. So we're gonna do gray into this beige type beak. So I'll show you how I did that. Yeah, this is, I just, I have a whole bunch of these on my desk. <laughs> yeah, I know. Can you hear now, Michelle? Uh, hopefully. And we're going to do his little feet in that color, too. So the only one, the only color that I need now is, um, like, I think I'm going to use R20 for the little tongue. So I'm going to add that one to my holder. See how many holders? Um, okay, so I'm going to start with his beak. So I'm going to zoom in. Oh, yay. I'm so glad. So I'm going to zoom in so you guys can really see. Hi, Kathy. So we're going to color this cute little bird first. So I'm going to do his beak and his feet first. And I like to give him a little bit of um, detail in him. So I'll show you how I'm going to do that. This is C6. And I'm going to start off by putting just a little bit of this really dark. Like, I'm going to turn this around so you guys can see a little better. I'm going to put a little bit of this really dark up close to this bird's mouth. And then I'm going to put a little bit on the edge of his beak on both sides. Just like that. It looks much lighter um, on camera, but than it does for me. Maybe that's my lighting. Maybe I have too much light shining on it, but hopefully you guys can tell. So C4 is the next one. And now I'm just going to pull out a little bit more on that color from where I put it before. And then next, we're going to go into that beige color. So I'm going to start pulling out from this one as well. So cute, right? I'm going to soften this transition right here because I feel like that was a little bit too, um, too different right there. So there we go. Now we have that transition softened a little bit. So... I have a question for you guys. There's only three of you here or four of you maybe, but I have a question. Do any of you have a Hobby Lobby by your house? And have you been lately? Anybody have a Hobby Lobby by their house? And have you been there lately? Nope. Oh, that's really a bummer. I went there tonight for a little while to check out. Um, I'd heard some rumors that they were selling Copics really cheap, so I wanted to go check it out. Not in Canada. Ugh. Oh, Cheryl. They have Copics. They have Copics for a dollar ninety nine hi Linda um I can't believe it and they're the sketch too just like these hi Ron okay so then I'm going to use this e51 so I used 42 here I'm going to use 51 here 
I heard that they were having this sale, so I decided I would go check it out. And they really did have those markers for $1.99. I could not believe it. That's a little bit harsh, so I'm going to pull in E40 and soften it up. Hi, Mary Joyce. So I'm going to use E40, and I'm just going to go over this and kind of soften it and dull that bright uh, peach look up a little bit, that peachy tone. And just kind of settle it down a little bit. So now we have his beak looking a little more like the regular. I know. Holy crap, right? I'm not kidding you. I couldn't believe it. Cheryl, you know, if you have a second, why don't you, um, after the live, send me a message. Yeah, send me a, 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 send me a DM after this. And hey, mom. I tried to call you today and you didn't you didn't answer. I was gonna see if you wanted to go to Hobby Lobby to see if they have any of the markers you're still missing up there at your house. I know you can't drive, so I thought I would see if you wanted to go tomorrow. Yes, let me know. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit down here. like this just a little bit on the bottoms of his little feet I'm gonna do just a teeny bit in between his toes I don't know if they really call them toes but they're toes to me they're toes so it's a really good deal so I have to tell you that they have um, just because I absolutely can't believe it but if you're lucky and they still have these they have the whole set Can you read that price? Eight twenty-four. Eight twenty-four. No refills. I. That's what I was looking for. But from thirty-six to eight twenty-four, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six markers in there for eight dollars. Yes, Michelle, that's what you missed. I got these at Hobby Lobby today. Six markers was thirty-six. Now it's eight twenty four, and the indie the individual markers are a dollar ninety nine. I kid you not. I'm not kidding. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Yeah, Michelle, you got to go quick because people are are getting the clue now. But I wanted to let you guys know you should go first thing in the morning if you really want them because people are buying them out. But go to anyone you can. Okay, good. Yeah, I wanted to see if you wanted to go, but if you're if if you're going out tomorrow, then uh, go check it out. Take your list, mom, of the markers you need, because it that's a really sweet deal. Okay, so I'm expanding a little bit from where I put my last color. I wasn't sure if it would be my location or not, so I took a jaunt out today to check it out, and sure enough. They were on sale. I couldn't believe it. Let's not tell anybody else. Okay, there we go. Anybody who was here early enough on the live caught it. <laughs> E42 is next. I got a few because Dale's been wanting me to teach him how to color. And so I thought... If I get him some of his own, then he won't use mine. <laughs> so E51. Jack's sleeping at my feet, so you guys might be able to hear him snore in here in a minute. And then we're going to get in with that E40 and just smooth out and soften those colors to a little bit deeper tone. Now, I like to do one more thing with these little feet just to give them a little bit of personality. And I'm going to go back in with my C6 
And I like to just put some little lines in here. So I just put a couple on his legs and then I did a couple on his little toes. And you don't have to do that if you don't want to, but I thought it was super cute. I also put a few like across here just to kind of give him a little bit of, make it look like his little feet had some, some stripes on him. And then I'm gonna go in with E40 one more time, that's the last color, and just kind of soften up those little stripes so they're not too obvious on there, but they're still subtle enough that they're super cute. So there we go. Now he has some style going on on his feet. And then I'm going to switch to, not the yellows, but I need to pull out this R20 so I can go ahead and do his tongue. I'm doing it all in one color, but I think because I was gonna use R43 on the red area of the bird, I might come in here with this 43 and just give him a little bit darker in his mouth and then blend out with the R20 just to make that a little bit softer. can't believe that I buy almost nine to ten each year yeah they're they're seven ninety nine regularly hi Karen so that deal is a bargain and a half okay so what I want to do is I want to start with the yellow colors next so I have y18 y13 and y11 yeah I know Cheryl that's why you have to contact me after this. Yeah, it's crazy. Crazy, crazy. So I'm going to start with Y18. And I want this to be sort of in his wings and a little bit under his tail. So I'm going to go ahead and put this yellow where I want it. So I'm going to start just with these little areas here. And I'm just going to lightly touch the paper. I don't want to saturate it too much. I don't want to put a whole lot in there because I'm going to have to blend it with the red. But I wanted to put just a little bit here so I can blend out from it. I also wanted to put a little bit underneath these, ta these little tails here. Not a lot, just a little bit. Hi, Kim. And then this one is Y13. It's a big jump from Y18, but I, I think we can do it. So I'm just gonna blend out from there, but again, this is a very light touch. Like I'm not touching it very heavily at all. And I am kind of softening up where I started with the darkest shade, because it'll help with the blending. Hi, Phyllis. So I'm just softening these little spots up under the tail. Question. How tall is that image? That's a good question. From the top of his hair to the bottom of his little feet, it's almost two and a quarter. He's about two this way. Two by two and a quarter. So we're at about a two by two. Okay, Y11 is next. They're little, so they'll fit in your planner, but they're also big enough that you can use them on a card. And they're a little bit easier to color than they look, even though it's just tiny spaces. They're not any more than the planner girls, so a good size. Yeah, it's definitely hard to tell on the screen. And I do, we do try to make them, you know, big enough that they're easier to color and not difficult to color. Okay, so next I'm gonna move into my blue and red. So let's go with blue first. I have B37, 26, hi Meg, and 20, Four. And I want this 
to be the outer part of his wings. So B37. So I'm gonna start on the edge of the wings and work my way in. And I'm gonna do these little brush strokes with my marker pretty upright because I want you to be able to see those. These are his feathers after all. Now, when I blend the blue and yellow, it is definitely going to make a bit of green, which I'm okay with. Hi, Rinska. And then I'm also gonna do a little bit from here out because I want a little bit of this blue to be down here as well. Like that. I would put it underneath his wing, but if I do that, it's gonna make it look really dark there like he went potty in his pants or something. Takes longer in Canada, I know it does. I'm so sorry, Cheryl. We try to get those out pretty quick for you because I know it takes a while. But you should get them soon. And I'm sure I'll do more birds next week, so we'll be good. So this is B26, and I'm just going to continue working out from where I stopped with that last color, and the more upright I hold my marker, the more fine the brush strokes I get. It's the next color that will go into the yellow a bunch more, so just moving a little bit out here. You're going to really like coloring these. They're super fun. Your funny body in his pants. <laughs> exactly. I don't want to do that to my poor bird. B24 is the last color that I chose, and this is the one that's going to blend into the yellow. So whenever I do this, it's almost a little bit like when we do um, rainbow coloring, how you're mixing in two entirely different color families. So when I do that, I like to come back after I do the lightest color, I like to come back with um, the lightest color of the other one. So if that makes sense, what I mean is this is the lightest color I used in blue. And then I'm going to go back in. That is correct, Michelle. They are not on sale online. You got to go in this store. So I'm going to use the Y11 now to really get that smooth blend between the yellow and the blue. So a little bit of back and forth is how you're going to get that really well, but it's also going to give you a bit of a green shine to it, which I think is pretty neat. So I'm just doing this back and forth to kind of smooth out that coloring. If you have to go back in with the other blue one again, you can. But look at that, how that just put that really pretty green on there too. Hi, Diane. Okay, so now we're going to go to red. I'm going to move these around again. Okay, so now we're gonna go to our red colors, which are R59, R37, R46, R24, R43. So I think because this ink right here is, is still pretty wet, I'm gonna go ahead and do the wing and the tail first, and then we'll do the rest of the body. I'm going to start with R59, which is my darkest color, and I'm just going to come along this wing right around the bottom area. And I'm going to do a little bit of feathering out from there just to kind of get that little feather look. Hi, Renska. And then I'm also going to do that red out from this blue. So I'm going to put a little bit in here as well. I can't really blend that very, very light blue with this darkest red. So I'm just putting some accent colors in there. And I will do a little more of that blending when I get to the lighter colors. 
So next I'm going to move to R37. And I'm going to start doing those brush strokes out just a little bit further. We're getting start getting ready to start meeting up with that yellow down here at the bottom. Just putting a little bit of this in here. Not a whole lot right now. I want that tail to be pretty bright. I'm going to do a little bit of that under part right there. Oh, look at all my friends are here tonight. And a few newbies. Or newbies that finally spoke. <laughs> R46 is the third color in the combo. So I'm going to start filling that in pretty good with that color. A little bit over here. Just start building that out a bit. Looks a little funny right now, like it doesn't really mix, but it'll be okay in the end. I promise. Okay, so R24 is the one where I'm going to start blending those colors. So I'm going to start, and I'm when I brush, I'm going to brush and lift. Like, I'm going to start brushing and lift so that I can get really um, light strokes into that yellow. But not a bunch of them, just some of them. Just to start building that yellow color. Because the next one we got is the pink. So this is the one where I'm going to start blending out with this one. Really using a lot more of this red and a little bit more into that blue. But very small brush strokes for that. We don't wanna to put too much, but we wanna start building that in. I saw a few names pop up that I didn't recognize. That's why I said there are a few newbies. But they're not, they're not saying a whole lot. <laughs> R43 going into that yellow. Now again, because we're moving this yellow into the, this red into the yellow, we are going to have to come back in with the yellow and blend that as well. So there we go. We started getting a pretty good hypercilla. And now I'm going to start blending a little bit more both ways. In the yellow and in the blue. In the yellow and in the blue. Same with this one, and softening up that blue as well. Oh, you can't see the comments. They must still be having trouble from last night. That's a bummer. But this is starting to do really well here. So I think in the tail, there's a little bit of really light in there. So I'm going to go in with the lightest color in the blue combination and just kind of smooth that out now that I put that red up against it. Just to make that look a little bit better and a little bit less uh, light. I don't want it to be light. I want it to go dark to dark. And now I'm going to pull out the mid-tone of the yellow because it's significant. The red is way darker than, than the yellow. And then I'm going to start pushing back into the red just to smooth out that transition. And I think that's going to help a whole lot. And that kind of smooths out that tone just shades from one color to another. Now, in person, this part right here doesn't look so green as it does on camera. It really just looks more blue-ish. But if, if, if it was more green like that, I would probably come in with this blue again and kind of touch it up just one more time. Because I don't really want that obnoxious green in there. I want a little bit, but not really blatant green. And then I'm going to go in with the Y13 and kind of blend going the other way on this one. Just to soften that transition between the blue and the yellow. 
So sometimes you have to go a little bit back and forth to kind of smooth out when you're doing rainbow-ish colors. Um, I mean, that kind of is like a rainbow, but look at how smooth it is. It came out really well, so I'm super happy with that. I hate when, when it's acting up and you can't see the comments. It's very frustrating. Try going out and come back in. I had to do that a bunch of times. Um, so back to our R59, which is our darkest shade. Now I'm going to start building it in in the rest of the body. So underneath his wing would be the dark area. And along the bottom of his body. So I'm just going to start building out a little bit from there. And then I'm going to do underneath his beak. I'm going to do all the way behind his beak. And along his face down here. And a little bit right here. Just give him a little bit in the front, a little bit in the back. And then I'm going to come back here where his wings are tucked. And this is the back of his head, so I'm going to give him a little bit on this back of his head. I think I'm going to do a little bit from these two. I don't normally do that, but I think tonight we're going to try it. We're just going to put some tips here for him. A little bit of dark tips on their hair. Hi, Stacy. It looks awesome. You like it? It's really fun. It's kind of a little taste of the rainbow without doing a full rainbow. <laughs> R37. So we're going to turn him around and start building out from where we put this darkest shade. Now this one's still pretty dark, so I'm not going to do a whole lot with this one. But I'm going to touch wherever I had put that darkest shade and kind of soften it up and extend out from there. Just keep that smooth, a little bit more smooth. I'm going to come up from this wing. Start building that in. I am going to do a little bit underneath each one of these little, I don't know if you call that hair or what he calls that, but do I want to color your images? Oh, <laughs> so talented and patient. <laughs> I do love to color, I can tell you that. R46 is next. I'm going to flip him around because we got to do up underneath here. This is the third color, so it gets quite a bit. I think I'm not going to use a whole lot of the light color on the body just because I don't want to turn him pink. I want him to stay red. So this one is the true color. So I'm going to start building in his neck a little bit along the back. And then I'm going to do around the outside of his eye with this true color because I think that'll really be helpful and then up here we're gonna do the outside because this is kind of like the true color so I'm gonna kind of give him up quite a bit of this color in here there we go and then the next one is R24 oh. I love to teach. I think that's where the patience comes from. R24. Now again, I said I'm not gonna use a lot of R43. So I'm gonna start blending this out and I'm just gonna leave very tiny areas of white, like barely any on his little chest. And then just a little bit on here as well because I don't wanna turn him pink. And that R43, it's pretty darn pink. I'm just going to leave him small areas to play with that pink. Maybe a little bit up here on its, his head. We'll leave him a little bit up there on his head. And then I'm going to come out from here and in from here. There we go. And that leaves him a little bit of space for the lightest color. Oh, I need to clean this marker. It is dirty. Wanna see? Ah! That freaks me out. <laughs> you love those colors? I like this color combination. 
Okay, so now when we do this one, we're just gonna kinda do a little bit of black back and forth, blending that out, and we'll get that little bit of highlight look right there. We're gonna do the same thing with this one, up and down, back and forth, kinda saturating the paper with this color. We're gonna do the same thing here. This is one of those magic kind of markers that really starts moving the color around for you, which I really, really like. So I bet you thought these little hairs were going to be dark, and they're not. They're going to be really light. The only thing I want to prevent is a big difference right there between his head and his hair. I don't want it to look funny. That smooth blend in there. I love it. I think I missed a little spot right there. I think I need to use a darker color for that. Let's go in with the true color and fix that one little spot. You can always go back in, just be really cautious when you go back in because if you put too much, you're gonna darken the color a lot. So there we go, that fixed it. I think there's one right there too. All right, so now he's doing a lot, lot better. Now, if you wanted, you can leave his eye just black like that. He's so cute, thank you, I love him. Or you could put a little bit, I'm gonna go in with the B26, and I'm just gonna gently put a teeny line above his eye with this blue. It's a little bit darker than I wanted it to be, but it stands out a bit, so I like it. I'm gonna go in with the 24 and soften that up, but I'm gonna keep it inside that little area that I already marked, just to lighten it up a bit. Oh look, I got a shine on my eye. So I don't like the way the eye looks because it looks kind of shiny right there, but I think that's because the, the Memento ink didn't go as dark as I wanted it to. Let me get a different fancy liner. That one's not working so good. Um, and what I'm going to do is darken this eye up. That way it'll stand out from the blue quite a bit. And then it'll look a lot better. So when I hold it up here, you can see the blue a lot better. And then when it dries, we'll come in with the gel pen and boop, put the white back in his eye. Also, something else is bothering me and that's that I think this inside of his mouth should be darker. So I'm gonna go over it with that C4 just to kind of tone it down a little bit. And now I'm happy with him. So those, that was what we, that was the coloring that I wanted to do tonight. And then I wanted to play with the stencil that, um, that released this month as well. So I chose these two colors. Any hints for what the February release will be? Um, nope. I can't think of a good one. <laughs> I want it, it's not gonna be it's not gonna be Valentine's. I can tell you that. Okay, so I chose squeeze lemonade prize ribbon. <laughs> I'm not very good on the on the spot uh hints like Jamie is. <laughs> um and I love that little bird. He's so cute. We will have to fussy cut him, but let's play with the stencil and the backgrounds first. So I'm going to grab that mat that my hubby got me for Christmas that I showed. Because I think it'll be really easy to use that. So I have some card stock, front of the card size, a little bigger here so we can... Um, so we can play around with the stencil. I think we have to put the stencil down first. 
<laughs> that nope. <laughs> oh, I can't help myself. Okay, so maybe this is, I don't know, this might work if I put it over here, but I have three papers out because I want to play once with this one, once with this one, and then once with them together and see which one we like better. So that's my plan. And I'm sticking to it. Okay, let me see if I can zoom out. Oh yes, that's much better. Holy cow. I was working in a very small screen area. So I'm using the Distress Oxides, which I really, really like. And my Rabbit Hole Designs brush. And I'm gonna do the lemonade first. And then I'm gonna do the prize ribbon over it. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm gonna be in love with this holding my stencil. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm not happy with that. So, this works really good for some other stuff, but for this one right now, it's, it's just not working for me. So, sorry, tilt, halt. Your comments are back, yay! Okay, I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna tape this down because I think it's better for me before I I'm out of control. I don't wanna put it on there too much because I don't wanna cover up too much. So I cut these pretty close to the size of the card, so. And now I'm gonna see if I can fantastically put this right back over top of where I had it before. <laughs> and we'll see how good I am with that. All right, now I'm gonna tape down this stencil. And I'm gonna tape all four corners only because I really don't want it to move while I'm working on it. Day gum it. That's what happens when you have to line it up. <gasps> this is also what happens when you've been crafting all night. <laughs> you get a little bit on the tired side and can't keep up. I want to Pull your stencil. I like to pull my stencil pretty tight when I do this just so I can make sure to get a good hold. Now I don't have to hold it. I'm so happy. <laughs> Yay! Now I can just easily put my, my color on there. I had to order a squeezed lemonade refill because this is starting to get kind of low on ink. I don't know if any of you have had that problem with yours. I've had these oxides since the first set of oxides came out. So each one of them, when they were released, I bought the new one. So I've had them as long as they've been. And some of my older colors are starting now to have less ink on them. <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. Um, so I started noticing that some of my oxides are... Um, getting kind of low on ink so I have to really rub the pad pretty hard to get the ink to come out the way I want it and so hence the reason I went through and made all these swatches was so I could write down which ones I needed refills for or which ones I could refill um, and I wanted to share something with you guys while I was doing this because I discovered that I let my black soot, I let my black soot sit for a while and it was dried out, it was barely working. And when I tried to refill, it wouldn't refill. Like it wouldn't soak into the pad, it just sat on top. Even when I let it sit for a long time. So I think I just ruined the pad by not refilling it, um, which I'm really sad about. But there's a uh, Renska. I got mine from Stamps Alive. She has really good prices. She just sells like on fa Facebook, but you can email her and she can tell you what she has or whatever. But I think she charged me 
I want to say four dollars for the refills for these and I think it was 450 or for the ink pads something like that so she has really good prices but it's called stamps alive and um, you can look for the Facebook group she has a lot of pictures on there and stuff of different things that she's been in business for a long time but Jamie gave me her name and I contacted her and she got back to me right away and um, yeah she totally took care of me but yeah no my black soot is gone I can't even use it it's so bad so and I ruined one other one too you guys want to see what happened to it I think I still have it do you know where they are honey I had them sitting over here if I can oh there it is okay so this is my black soot and when I you can see the spots I had to put a something on it to soak it up because when you put the ink on it won't go in the pad at all it's like just sitting there it's terrible so this one I'm pretty much is dead this one <laughs> look the whole pad came off so you can't really rub on it so I had to buy a new one of these too yeah they're really good prices. She was really, really nice. And she got back to me really fast. And she has oxides and um, the distressed inks and the sprays and all kinds of stuff. So, look. Why does that color look kind of green in the video? Maybe that's just my TV. But I like this one. What do you guys think? kind of pretty it's not it's definitely yellow yellow I don't know why it doesn't look yellow on the screen but uh, it's definitely yellow yellow so that's what it looks like by itself so we could definitely use that one if we wanted with our little bird I think it would match and I like that but I wanted to try the other one first and I'm gonna save that because if I come back in with that one I'm gonna use um, the same color. I'm just going to use yellow and blue tonight. Okay, now I'm going to try just the flowers and see what I think. It does look yellow on your end? Okay, good. Maybe it's just my, the way my screen looks. It's weird. Okay, I'm going to lay this back down. I'm using my same tape. I just usually flip it around so I don't get the yellow mixed in with the whatever. So, these are the flowers. Oh, they're so pretty. I really like these flowers. I think they're really neat. And, you know, I, I also used it for a raindrop. Like, I masked off everything but one little drop and then put it all over my card when I needed raindrops, which I thought was really neat. That was... It came out pretty cool. I liked it. I was happy with it. And then we're going to do this one with the blue. And then we're going to mix them together so we can see them. This is prize ribbon. It's fairly new, so I didn't have to refill this one. It's real. See how much easier it is to pick up this ink because this one's not so dry. But you can hear the... You can hear the um, ice in my cup <laughs> making making noise. Hi, Nana Joe. This is how easy it should be to apply the ink. I mean, it should be this easy. Just depending on how dark you want, you could just rub it more. But not as you don't have to rub as hard as I was with the yellow the reason I had to rub so hard with the yellow is because it is um, low on ink oh I just had an idea Ideas come to me when I'm working. You guys want to see what this looks like when you lift it up? I do. I'm excited. 
Are you guys excited? Real life here. No holds bar. Ah, super cool. Look, I even have them on my desk. So cute. I really, really like these. So I'm gonna lift up these tapes, but I'm gonna leave them on the table because I'm gonna use them again. <laughs> I don't like to waste my with love tape. So this one I think would look really cute with that too. So either one I think would look cute. So now let's do them both. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna layer them up. I'm gonna put the yellow on the bottom and then the blue on top. I want to know if it's going to make them green or if they're still going to look blue. So let's see what happens. Okay, so going back with the yellow. This is my yellow stencil. This is my last piece of paper for her tonight. And then we'll pick a card base and we'll throw it all together and we'll be super happy. I'm going to flip this around, I think, because it has a lot of blue on it and I'm about to use yellow. So I don't wanna mix the blue in with the yellow. And then I'm gonna put this one on there like that. Frozen! Are we all supposed to sing Frozen songs? Uh-oh. I got that tape right in the way. I really don't want that that far down. So I'm gonna lift it up a bit. It'll just stick to the stencil, I'm okay with that. You good there? Oh no, Michelle. It's okay, I have to tape this down. You can go out and come back in. Although you can't hear me, so I'm not sure how good that is. Just let it go, let it go. Okay, we're gonna come back to the yellow. I can't sing because they might try to flag my video. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going back in with this yellow. It's behaving a little better right now, but see how much I can cover so much more ground with that prize ribbon because it's all full of juice and happy. Coming and going. Oh no. I hate when that happens. You know, I think it'd be cool that you could also like, let's leave a space. What would happen if you left a space? It would be just flowers and not, oh, let's do that. I'm doing it. Are you guys ready? <laughs> Okay, I just decided to be spontaneous. Here we go. This is what it looks like. Oh, this is cool, you guys. Look at that. It just fades out. I like it. Now I'm going to put the blue over top. I want to line it up, but this is annoying me really bad. I want to line it up in my honeycombs. So that's what I'm looking at right now, although it doesn't really matter. I could have put this right over top of the other stencil, but I didn't do that. But I can see the honeycombs through the stencil. So I can tell they're pretty much lined up. All right, you're bugging me, tape. You're killing me, man. You're done. All done. That tape's done. Hi, Angela. Okay. So let's hope the paper doesn't move around because I just removed the tape from it. But it is what it is. Okay. So I'm going to start with the darker color on this side and then kind of fade into that as well. Here we go. Oh, it is going to be blue. I guess it depends on how, how, 
how strong you put the color in. So let's do a little bit darker in some spots and a little bit lighter in others and see what kind of background we get. How about that? So I'm getting lighter as I'm going out here to the no color, the no yellow. And then I'm gonna go back to over here and make this darker. I want some significantly darker and some lighter. So I'm kind of going over a few of these again and again just to get a darker color. Thank you, hon. Okay, all right, now we're gonna see. You're dark in some areas, light and hard to be consistent. It takes some, it takes some practice, I think. I don't always get a consistent color, but then I always try to change it up anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> not really helpful to me but check this out okay I like it you guys like it I like it a lot I think I want to use this one which I kind of thought I would anyway and I'll still use the other two I just will use them on different projects but tonight I think I'm gonna go with this one so I'm just gonna lay my stencils up here and clean them later. They're stuck to my markers. But I think I like this one. You guys like this one? I really like this one. Look at this. And I like that it has some of the honeycomb and some not. I, I think that's really neat. I like that. That's the first time I've done it like that and I'm super happy with it, so. There's a lot you can do with these stencils. And this one has two in the set, so how bonus is that? All right, so let's put it on a card. Look at, I think it, the blue and the yellow look really good with the bird. I'm excited. I did not pick my card base because I didn't know if we were gonna go with blue or yellow or whatnot, so. I think, oh, it looks like I don't have any red in here. I was gonna go with red. Oh wait, yes I do. I lied. Look, I think this will look really cool if we add red with the blue and yellow. I say clean them later, only when I'm not live. I'll be cleaning them as soon as I'm not live because <laughs> I won't be able to take it. You know that. You know I can't. So I'm going to trim this down now so it fits on my card. So you guys know these sizes, right? Because five and a quarter. Uh-oh, this one's going to have to be a little smaller than that. There we go. Just sometimes when you make these stencils, when you do your stencils like this, look, I missed a whole corner down here. What the hey, man? Well, nobody's perfect. Huh, I'll figure out something to do with that. Don't you worry. gonna watch me get crafty here's some real craftiness are you ready for this I'm gonna put this right over top and fix that yellow spot you guys think I can do it I think I can do it I think I think I can I think I can going to make it green. <laughs> now I have to put the blue on there. It's a design element. I'm about to fix that design element. It needs to go this way. Right there. I can tell where it laid. Oh, we're almost there. Come on, paper. Work with me. There we go. Oh, 
Oh, look at me go. I fixed it. Yay! See, I'm glad I didn't send my hubby away with the stencils because then I couldn't have fixed it. Yay! All right, that's what happens. I'm so funny tonight. I am full of it. I think it's because my daughter and my grandson were here most of the evening and we were being silly and making a Spider-Man box car for school tomorrow. And I think that's why I decided to be silly tonight. I like this car. I, th I like these colors. I'm excited. Oh, man, I got to fussy cut this because I forgot I didn't do that yet. All right, hang tight. I'll try to do it as fast as I can so you guys don't have to sit there for too long. Or you could just talk to me. Because I got lots of new Copics. <laughs> I told my hubby, I said, I got I got some I got you some Copics, but the but the trick is that you get my old ones and I get the new ones. <laughs> Cause I'll use them more than you will. <laughs> That's not very nice, is it? He's so good to me, and that wasn't very nice of me, but I did do all the shopping for them. <laughs> I did go out and uh, and deal with the 5 o'clock traffic to do that. So, yeah. Got to get some benefit. The lady at the counter. Okay, you guys, how many did I get them? 150. <laughs> Something like 150. Um, so I have to tell you, here's the funny part. My pen's on my job, you're right. Um, I have a funny story to tell about the Hobby Lobby Endeavor. So I went there. And they've had a sale like this once before. But maybe it was Michael's and not Hobby Lobby. I'm not sure. It was Hobby Lobby? Yes. They had a sale like this once before where they put a few of their Copics on sale for, a, you know, like two or three bucks. And, uh, yes, they are on sale. And um, I went there and they the last time they had it they had them just all in the clearance section just laying on the shelves so you could go and dig through them and do whatever you want well now they don't they're still locked in the case so if you don't walk up to the case there's no sign that says they're on clearance or anything but if you walk up to the case and you look inside you can see the orange red tags on them that say dollar 99 so I go to the lady and I say I go to the lady and I say um excuse me can you open the Copic case for me I need to buy some markers and she was like oh yeah sure so she opens it up well they have to stand there while you pick them out okay and I go um I hope it's okay but I'm about to open the cap on every one that I'm gonna buy and make sure there's no cracks in the caps and the inks aren't dry and she was like um no go right ahead stay as long as you want I don't I'm fine with that and I was like okay I literally stood there for over a hundred markers and opened every cap both ends and <laughs> looked at it to make sure it didn't have any cracks in it and then it, and we only found one that was dried out so that was good there was only one and I didn't find any cracked caps so I was really happy about that now if I hadn't looked I'd have probably got home with about six cracked caps but because I checked them all there were none so anyway, I must have been in there like 30, 40 minutes maybe going through all these markers and she had to sit next to me. She sat on the floor with me next to the case while I went through every marker I wanted. <laughs> then she walked me up to the front. It was so funny. She was really nice though. I really liked her. I didn't get her name, but she was super nice. So I'm gonna put this 
on here. I probably should have stamped the sentiment first, but that's okay. We'll stamp it next. I like this. Um, this, some of it faded out and some of it not. I think it's neat looking. I really like it. I might have to try that with some other stencils. I think it's pretty cool. She'll remember me next time. And run. <laughs> yeah, she was like, um, are these like special kind of markers? And I was like, um, yeah, they're like the best. And she said, um, so you use them a lot? I said, uh, yeah. <laughs> I use them a lot. <laughs> she was surprised when she saw my, my tattoo. <laughs> I know, right? I did give Dale a hard time. I said, why you gotta do everything I do? Because you just want to do it better than me. <laughs> it's just a joke we have with each other. He is pretty good at what he when when he does stuff. He's yeah, you guys know because you've seen that. So I did the license plate and the face and the stuff for the little um, car that we were making for Cooper. And then Dale does the steering wheel and the dashboard. And I was like, okay, he's upping me on that, <laughs> on that little car. Oh, you hear Jack now? Yep. <laughs> That's how men are. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to use this. I love this happy birthday to you from the My Weakness set. Love, love, love it. And so I want to use it on my card. Because it is my favorite one. My favorite sentiment. I don't know why I like it so much, but I love it. So there we go. And I am going to stamp this right in my Misty after I've already stuck it to my card. I think we'll be okay. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? It's just paper. And I'm in a good mood, so if I mess it up, whatever. <laughs> It'll be all right. <gasps> we just need to stamp it once more because it's not dark enough. I just bought this memento pad, and it doesn't seem like it's quite as juicy as it should be. It's kind of sad. You guys, you should have heard my daughter. She came over and she was like, can you help me make this car for Cooper? You guys did it last year. And I was like, yeah, what'd you bring? What supplies do you have? And she was like, um, I have to go buy them at the store. And I was like, well, how do you want to do it? And she was like, I mean, it's Spider-Man. Do I need like black uh, red paint? Or I was like, oh my gosh. So we went and got a box, <laughs> and I said, um, no, we don't need that. We'll just, no, I'll just use paper. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, my goodness. He's so cute. Oh, I can't decide. Should I, should I wobble him? Should I sweet spring him up, or should I... Um, Put sweet pops. What do you guys think? Should I wobble them? I should wobble them, huh? So these are the sweet springs we have in the shop. I don't know if you guys know how to use these. It took me a long time to figure this out. Oh, just pop them up. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you guys how to do this anyway. If you decided to, and then we'll just pop them up. Oh, we got a wobble. Somebody agreed on the wobble. Okay, so... These are two different ways. So this one is solid and this one has like an opening in it. So look, see, I can stick my finger in it. This one's solid and this one is not. So this one goes on the back of your bird and then this one goes on the paper because it's clear. So you won't be able to see it on the paper. So I can't tell you how many times I asked Jamie that question and she told me 
before I could remember how to do it. So I'm just going to put it, I'm going to put it like in the back, but I'm going to put it pretty close to like the center of him. I don't want it to show, so I want to put it kind of in the center so that he's not top heavy or bottom heavy, <laughs> if you will. And then you could just peel these off, and they're sticky as well, so you don't need any tape. But see how that's clear? Once you take that out, it's clear. So you can't see it on your card. See? And then you take that, that part the clear part and you make sure the clear part sticks to your paper and it's easiest to just squish them down and then I take my something whatever I have handy and just kind of press that onto the card to make sure it stays really good and then I push them down again no he doesn't make those <laughs> Don't they just make you laugh? He did make the stencil, though. He designed it, and he made the stencil. Oh, we need to fix his eye before I let you guys go for the evening. Sometimes I could just sit here and talk to you guys all night. So this is my white gel pen. It helps if it sits flat on the table. but Oh, so much better. You like it? I, these birds are really good on wobbles. I'm not kidding. Or whatever we call them. Sweet springs. Um, this one and then the one that the one that I did on the on the card, the release card. It was this one and I I made him I made him fly around too. I love it. It's so cute. And he came out really good. I did better on this one than I did on the one on the package <laughs> but it's super cute okay so tonight is Thursday I did not even know it was Thursday um, this morning I thought it was Wednesday so it's Thursday we have no live on Friday and then Jamie will pick up Saturday Sunday and Monday and I'll be back next week on Tuesday I love it too thank you so much for joining me and that was super fun. We'll use this for other ones. So remember, you can do part of it, all of it. You can layer it. Lots and lots of fun. So I'll let you guys know. Um, uh, Cheryl, contact me right after we get off the live. I'm glad you guys liked it. And if you have a Hobby Lobby by your house, you better go check it out if you need any more Copics. And everything else is on sale, too. It was like 40% off. It felt like the entire um, craft department. So kind of some good deals all over the place there. So you guys go check it out. And I will see you guys next week. Good night. Thank you for watching.